A man should be a man. Men are men, therefore men should be men. <laughs> to do otherwise is chaos, which is feminine. Hello, everybody, and welcome to part two of Seriously Wrong's Jordan Peterson 12 Rules for Life extravaganza. Yeah, it's an extravaganza. It's got 12 rules for life. We knocked rules one through six out. Bam, 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 bam last time. And now, and now we're back with more rules for life from the big man himself, Jordan Peterson, straight from a coma in Russia, badly meat poisoned, but... <laughs> To be fair, he wrote this book before the coma. That's true. Uh, but maybe he was on the before meat diet. the meat. Po- I'm not sure I the timeline. Came out 2018. When did he have his meat? When was he on Rogan talking about the the, the meat awakening and the cider? Know. Well, his whole thing started in like 2017. Like I think 2017 was when he made his video about Bill C16, and I think there was at least a year before the meat started. So he went on the diet in April of 2018. And the book came out in January of 2018. So, oh, okay. So pre meat, pre this whole book was pre. This is too. this is a, a a spry Jordan Peterson mind unweighed down by a entirely meat based diet. <laughs> good to know. Yeah, it's good to have these things in context. It's a try. You know, Jordan Peterson getting badly meat poisoned and whatever else. Ha- it's it's kind of tragic in the way that I felt like. I think this is like the appeal of Jordan Peterson really is that he is a conservative public intellectual in a time where like every competing prominent public conservative voice is either like an obvious sellout politician, smug dipshit, or is like a entirely agitation focused, like unprincipled grifter. <laughs> like public figure, you know, just right, right. Uh, trying to r- razzle people up and dunk on the libs and build subscriptions and outrage and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, jo- I mean, Jordan Peterson is an actual academic who has done some psychological work on, I think, addiction and alcoholism and some stuff with personality tests. Like, he's published and had his work referenced and cited. You know, like, he doesn't do that anymore, but he used to. So he brought more to the table than your Ben Shapiro's, your Matt Walsh's, your... I'm not saying that academics inherently bring more to the table, but I'm saying that, like, there was, like, interesting intellectual stuff going on beneath the surface of Peterson that you don't find in those other ones. So he's just always been more interesting to me. I think that's part of why he became subcultural phenomenon the way that he did was... I can't think of another public speaker on the right who is, like as interesting to listen to in general and like as entertaining in general especially when you see like his older lectures and stuff like that there is a there's like a real charisma there like there's always like these the the toxic conservative stuff is drips in and bubbles beneath the surface sometimes and stuff like that that you see a lot more like explicitly now on his modern twitter feed as he's been had his mind blasted out by just a meat hose spraying steak at his brain until it slowly degrades. Well, I mean, he used to say that he's not a conservative and I don't know if he still thinks that, but I mean, he has kind of given up and like joined the daily wire and he feels like more explicitly ad- admitting to the conservatism stuff now. Whereas back in the day he was like, no, I'm a centrist and like, you know, both sides have important, like, like chaos and order, you know, conservatism is order and, liberalism is more chaos and they work together to form of the right balance where you're like standing on an eagle and there's two wings or whatever i think i think that's a real <laughs> image he uses or he has like a snake one i think he also said a bird at one point i don't know you're on a balance a balance riding on a balanced bird i'm just imagining yeah like society like surfing a eagle yeah i don't know who replaces jordan peterson now that he spirals away it's pretty bleak man like tim pool that yeah. guy's not an intellectual. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, like, you have Brett Weinstein has become far more conservative, but he's just like a weird COVID person now for the most part. I'm I'm trying to think of, like, yeah, who pre-disappearing from the public eye for multiple years to deal with his health issues, his addiction and other health issues. Jordan Peterson, he felt like a very worthy opponent. And now he feels more like he feels closer to those other 
pundits especially his twitter output but even his like lectures and things feel like they've gotten more repetitive or he does he does a lot of interviews where he talks over people a lot saying the same things he always says oh how the mighty have fallen for a flash there he was almost a worthy opponent but but yeah this is it this is the book written during that period this is yeah peak peterson like we're probably never getting this level of peterson unpoisoned by meat so yeah, do you want to you want to dig back in? Yeah, let's hop into the the swimming pool, the maelstrom of various anecdotes pervaded in a loosely, actually I'd say fairly rarely in a way that is sequential, builds on itself, or is consistent, but nonetheless sometimes interesting. And as always, we're going to be trying to tip our hat at the slivers of gene along the way, the slivers of genius. <laughs> Um, as yeah, you, you know, really no cling is... to them like a like a lifesaver in an ocean when you. <laughs> find me. There's, he says a lot of things that are kind of interesting and fine, but like yeah, sometimes when there's like a genuinely good point, you're just like, ah, oh, it's what a relief. Uh, so rule seven: pursue what is meaningful and not what is expedient. Yeah, so just looking at those words, doing that that base top level reading. Yeah, it's a reasonable uh, yeah. perspective. Uh, And of course, the most important place we can learn that message from our history is in the Bible. There's a lot of Bible stuff in this chapter. Yeah, he does the Bible thing again. He talks about his flirtation with socialism in the 1980s, and he made some interesting claims about socialists. He said that socialists... Rule number nine. Assume that the person you're listening to might know something you don't. Ah, like Bill Nye always says. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, assume everyone you meet knows something you don't. It's a classic piece of wisdom. Yeah, it's like letter of the rule on this one. I'm all for it. I don't think I have any critiques of the specific text. Assume the person you're listening to might know something you don't. Yeah, no, I think it's a it's a sweet, wonderful, positive idea. It's useful as well. Yeah. Because that's part of the complementary difference of humankind. You know, we all know different things. And by pooling our knowledge and our creativity together, we can achieve things we can't achieve by ourselves. We can teach each other things. That's part of what's beautiful of being in human community. So, uh, yeah, I really like this this Rule 9 title. Yeah. So, uh, moving to the content <laughs> <laughs> of the chapter. Hello, everyone. Hi, this everyone. week we're going to be making a, uh, a meatloaf. And we're also going to be making a side dish of mashed beef with uh, some cubed beef as well as a, a small beef. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. And we'll just get right into it here. We got slabs of beef all over the table. The secret to a really great slab of beef is to cut up a whole bunch of more beef and put it on top, kind of fry that first beef in a frying pan, and then cover your other beef with the chopped up beef, and that will get nice and crispy. So it's a crisp beef coating over your beef. And that was a teaser for the latest episode of the Seriously Wrong podcast about Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. If you want to hear the full episode, head over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash seriously wrong and sign up for $6 a month. You'll get access to our entire archive, all the bonus episodes and episodes a day or two early. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. That's patently absurd. It's wrong. It's not a matter of opinion. It's seriously wrong.